Oil Protection. I'm your host, Steven. Today we're here at Express Lube and Auto Repair. What's up, guys? Jeff is our master mechanic on the channel. He does this stuff in his sleep, and that's why we consult with him. We got Matt. Matt's our one of our biggest enthusiasts on the channel. He's won like four or five, four or five giveaways days. already. Amazing. Yeah. Special, special guy. He shared the channel about I would say 100, yeah, that's four or 500 lot. times. Yeah, so that's great. For uh, the, the material yep. we're using here. He loves the content. And tonight it's dark, so we're coming into winter here and the sun's just setting here in Las Vegas. We're here at Express Lube and Auto Repair. Show you what it looks like out here. That's what we got. We got the sun setting right now. And there is Express Lube and Auto Repair. So there we are. So this is it. Okay, so We're starting her off here. What I'll do is Jeff's getting everything all dialed in. He's getting the tripod set up. Now we got some new and exciting things. We got the wall cleaned up over here. We got the uh, beautiful setup here. Jeff, master mechanic. So there it is on paper. It's real. Jeff's, we didn't just make up Jeff out of a a uh, cartoon book even though he, he's like he's out of a cartoon book he really is a real person and where is his and legit. there's all his certificates right here and we got right here so there he is big hot shot GM technician mechanic specialist master automobile technician and uh, Jeff did a lot of time in the military, so he did all the battlefield training, bunkers, airplanes, helicopters. And coming on over to Matt, we're doing a thing with Matt. Matt, we did a, uh, a engine flush on the truck. Yes. And we're going to be doing a oil analysis follow-up soon. Soon, yes. Very a soon. Of, maybe a thousand more miles for my 10,000. Yes, yes, yes. So what's the word of the day, Jeff? You worked Ooh. all day. All right, the word of the day is thank you. Everybody needs to say before the end of the day, thank you to somebody. Fair That's enough? Beautiful, Jeff. I like that. Beautiful, I love it. The touch of an angel. Ooh. Ah, such an inspiration, Jeff. is. crash through everything. So we got all our goodies here. We got some products. We're gonna be talking about this stuff today. We're gonna be really getting into this brake stuff today, dot three, dot four brake fluid. We're going to be talking about what makes it so special and, uh, you know, why does it boil 50 degrees more than uh, standard? 311 degrees is standard. 368. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can share it. Yeah, we're good. That's good. We're going to take this one off. Right so we're going to go over brake fluid today. Right here, we're right. also going to talk about some products. Okay. I guess I got a microphone here. It's my second mic. Oh, that is mic, mic number two. So we got mic number two. This goes to Jeffrey's Facebook feed. Jeff's a big hotshot Facebooker. And we're really, really stepping up the channel with Jeff too. And uh, just such a cool thing. There we go. We're good. Beautiful. Double mic. Hardwired and wireless. All right. So we're going to go over some products. Let me stick this right here. Get it all dialed in, and we're rocking and rolling. Let's see here, and she boo boo. There we go. All right. Oh, there we go. My internet speed would be nice and slow. All right, so we're squaring up a little bit. So yeah, we got the new. Oh, I didn't show everybody the wall. Let me show you the wall here. So we got the new magic wall. So if you don't know, Las Vegas is basically the capital of, uh, what is it, entertainment or what the, hell, what the hell do they call it? Entertainment capital of the world. And there's all these different types of people. They're a little different. And, uh, you know, I swear I'm completely normal. Um, but uh, and they, 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 they call them magicians. What is normal? And uh, you can see how normal they look. These Wait, are all magicians. If you ask Bizarro on that picture, normal is just a setting on the dryer. I like that. I like that. This is this gentleman here. He's one of my favorite. Really good guy. 
We got uh, this guy's on TV. I forget what the heck he does on there. I don't watch TV anymore. This guy always comes to the Magic Club. Really cool guy. Uh, right here. That, I don't know who that is. Our good man John's always at the club. Really cool guy, John. And we got a really cool thing going on here. That's a really good one. I like how spectacular it is. It's like perfect for Halloween, you know? So yeah, so if you don't go to Holly Weird, you can come to Las Vegas. And you can get just as much weird here, but it's not the same type of weird as Holly Weird. But, uh, you know, speaking of Hollywood, I tell people, I go, you know, actually, my dad owns MGM in Hollywood. That's Marvin's Grocery Market on uh, Sunset and Fourth. So wow. I helped out build that market. I uh, remember putting the grocery bags where they belong, and well, that's all I remember. And everybody always had their bags rip on them. Whew. It was tough. It was tough. So we're gonna sticker here, and you guys saw the shop. We're going to be redoing a wall over here. Jeff's going to be really stepping it up. Right, Jeff? That's right. And Jeff's really, really coming around. He's just uh, amazing how good he's getting with the magic. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just stick this on the tripod without blocking the other camera. And there we are. And there we are. All right. So we're good. Got the old laptop. And so yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. Today we're gonna go over the brake fluid. Uh, let's see, we're good on that. You're gonna come over a little bit, Jeff, in a second? All right, good. Just scooch over a little bit. All right, so we're just gonna start getting to this. Jeff's having some technical difficulties. But uh, yeah, so today we're going over brake fluid, brake systems, we're gonna be talking about the differences between rotors using uh, disc brakes, drum brakes. Speaking of the devil, I just got a car that has drum brakes on it. It's the, my new car, 59 Cadillac DeVille, and that is a 5,000 pound car that's got these drums. And when they get really hot, there's no brakes. Uh, you can put both feet on the brake pedal and the car just keeps going. So it's it's uh, you definitely don't want to heat soak the uh, the uh, drums. drums a whole lot. So there's a lot of yeah. a lot of downs to them, but you can still lock them up if they're cool. You can still lock up drum brakes, but they're no performance brakes, no, right, Jeff? It's not the same. Not the same. Are you coming around the corner, Jeff? I am coming around the corner. All right, right. Jeff's coming around the corner. He's getting everything all dialed in. So yeah, is this my water? Sure. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Mike, would you do me the honors of grabbing my so, yeah. thermos over here? Let me just see the post. All right. So. so we're just getting warmed up here. Yeah. If you have any questions, start leaving some questions. We're going to definitely get to them in a little bit. Uh, but we're going to just start to get into, uh, what do you want to start out with? The disc brakes or drums? or? Well, let's start with a story. I like starting with stories. So, uh, this is a story I heard, and the truth of it, I did not back check, but you know what? Hmm. It can be used as something to remember. So, the father of modern braking is the gentleman who made Bendix brakes. Right. Okay? Yeah. Now, the story is very similar to the story of how they came up with the sarin gas. Do you know the story of sarin gas? I don't know anything about it, Jeff. Okay, so sarin yeah. gas was something that they used in World War II. It's very deadly. Well, yes. Supposedly, this chemist, whose name or whose daughter's name was Saren, was killed by mustard gas. Huh. So, in answer to that, he made a gas after her name to kill everybody else. How nice is that? It's a happy story, right? That's beautiful. Vengeance is a bad circle. But Bendix is the other side of the story. He decided to save lives, not take lives. So, what Bendix did is prior to him developing the modern brake, which the drum brake is considered a modern brake, and we've used it for a long time, they had a clamping system. Mm -hmm. So basically it was a really large strap around the drum and it clamped. They actually still use those inside of transmission. And it's the band clamp that holds the shell. So brake. So, no, no, different. This oh. is for shifting. But yeah, oh, yeah. no, the, they've got clamp brakes also. Yeah. So this outside band style of braking 
didn't actually hold well enough because the mechanical leverage, the barrel had more leverage on the inside, the band was on the outside. So what they decided to do is you can push harder than you can pull something in, wow. right? So they took what basic drum brakes are. You have two drums, right? And you, you've got a drum, I'm sorry. You've got two shoes that are half moon shaped. And then inside of there you have a piece, you've got a return spring, and then you have a wheel cylinder. There's a couple other parts, but that is literally the simplest part of it. You'll put that on Jeff here. Oh, yeah. Okay. That way you're talking pretty quiet, Jeff. Yeah, well, because I know I was getting, I was yeah. squelchy when it was too high. Yep. So, there we go. Just have it aim towards you a little bit. You can put it on your front collar just like this. Aim right go. up at you. You're good. I'm good. All right, cool. So, Beautiful. there we go. All right. Cool. I'm going to speak softly because I don't want us to squelch. Yeah. So, basically what they do is inside the little wheel cylinder, it has hydraulic pressure, right? And the hydraulic pressure is provided by brake fluid. And it pushes these little tiny cylinders outward, which pushes the shoes out inside of the drum, which stops the wheel. Mm -hmm. So because his daughter got hit by a car that had these old rudimentary brakes, he put his nose to the grindstone and came up with a better braking system. Wow. So Bendix is the father of modern braking. Now obviously we've changed a lot. I'll go briefly through the history. We first had the Flintstones where they used calloused feet. <laughs> um, chariots had a drag stick. Uh, one of two ways. They could either pull the stick and it would drag on the wheel or pull the stick and it drags on the ground. If as a kid you ever made, did you ever make a soapbox racer? Did you ever? I used to build soapbox racer. So Weird. One of the most common braking systems yeah. that was easy to make was you take a little one by one, drill a hole, put it to the side of the frame. At the end of it, you'd take a little piece of two by four, drill it onto there, and it'd be over the tire. So when it was time to brake, depending on how far forward you set it, how good your brakes were. So if you could lever it at the back and have your pull, almost like an emergency brake, you pull up, it puts friction on the tire. That's an outward clamping. Um, you stop. Kind of, hopefully, depending on the size of the hill. Yes. Um, <laughs> just posted that. I like it, Jeff. Somebody, I like it. somebody Jeff's just giving put, us a lot uh, of good insight. I don't know nothing about any of that stuff. Uh, great. John Sheets. Thank you, John. And he's, we just pointed him up on yeah. the wall. Thanks, John. He did a cool little meme of uh, Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Love it. So, uh, all right. So we discussed rudimentary braking system. Obviously, they thought of the clamp brake because... You know, a 12-year-old kid thought of a clamp brake, too. Yeah. So then they got the drum brake, and they actually kept drum brakes for a very, very long time. I mean, we're talking, shit, we still use them. Drum brakes are still used on a lot of vehicles. So since they came out, and I'm not even going to quote you the year, I'm going to guess the early 1900s, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit before or after. Yeah. Um, but then from drum brakes, we had to come up with something better, right? Yeah. So... We decided that if we took a disc, a circle, a plate, and we put a caliper on there or a clamping device that is clamped by fluid pressure and two pads, which we have brake pads and they've, we'll discuss the iteration of uh, braking material because we've gone a really long way from what we started. Um, from you leather hit, to yeah. asbestos or whatever. Oh, asbestos were good. They have zinc could dissipate heat, but they'll also give you 10 cancer. types of cancer. Right. Mesothe if you've that's seen the mesothelioma commercial, that's yeah, talking right. about asbestos. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't breathe your dust. So yeah. Yikes. But as we progress forward with brakes, we had to increase the technology. This is where fluid comes in. This is the first time I'm going to discuss fluid. Yeah. So with drum brakes, as Eben said, when they get hot, they stop working. Well, um, that is partially due to the fluid because our fluid condition in there is pretty horrible, I'm guessing. Terrible. So the, the heat's getting there and any moisture in there, when it gets hot, the moisture expands. It'll do one of two things. It'll either turn your brake pedal into a big smush or it'll actually attempt to lock up your brakes for you because it's expanding inside the brake line. Okay? So... Drum brakes, very simple. We get to mo modern brakes, which is what we use now, which is pads and rotors. Um, and you've got all different types of pads and rotors. You've got different materials. You've got different types of calipers. We'll just start simple. The front of the braking system. Where's the braking system start, even? It starts, I think, with the brake pedal. Right. 
So, first things first. We have we have your foot. Yeah, your foot's pushing a brake pedal. Pushes all the fluids out and about. And we're just we're gonna do this very very simple. You everybody's had that pool toy that's the squirter. You suck the flu the water in. You point it at your brother's face and you shoot him point blank in the eye and see if you can make him cry. I like it. Jeff. Yeah, it's it's fun. I like so, it. So. We're doing the same thing. When you hit the brake pedal, there's a plunging cylinder that pushes in and sends fluid out hoses. These hoses divert one to each wheel. Not true. You get one to each front wheel, and then some of the older vehicles have one brake line going that operate both rear drums. Hmm. So, pretty simple. And then, so that is the very basic, and the fluid goes to the calipers. The calipers are... We have a caliper out there. Oh, you can grab it, Jeff. Oh boy. Get out there and grab okay, it. Okay, you know I'll what? I'll be here. I'm yeah, gonna grab yeah. a prop real quick, guys, because it's nice to show people. And we're at the shop today, so we have things to show. So if you're just getting on the channel, definitely give it a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. And uh, speaking of the devil, we have Evans giveaway coming up. And that's right, all these props here, we give this stuff away. All the lube. This right here, we got some. 40 handles well this is a european motor oil and this is uh really for porsche a spec audi vw mercedes this is the amsoil signature series 100 percent synthetic and uh, this is what a lot of the people make a big deal about online they go oh you know amsoil this amsoil that well this is the oil and you say well how big of a deal is it well it may be a believer it might be i don't know it's it's good it's good for like 20,000 miles it's four times better than mobile one extended performance so a lot of people talk about mobile one you got their doggy scraps at the bottom then you got their extended performance this is four times better than extended performance mobile one and it just doesn't burn so it protects your turbos i got a whole brake job here guys so Thanks. now we're going to get off the motor oil and we're going to get back to the brakes but we will return back to the motor oil at one time. <laughs> All right, so even I'm gonna yeah. hand you this. Yes. Perfect. Of course, Jeffrey. Let's get mixed up again. Of course. One mix. This is what we consider the PI classic handling. That's how you present a bottle of PI. All right. You set it there like that. So. Now, just so you, just so you know. This, this brake job's happening tomorrow, so I don't mind opening. So Jeff's yanking out. What do we got? Some rotors coming out of there? Now these right here are fine. OEM European spec brakes. This is for a 2004 BMW 325 Ci. But we were talking about calipers. We were talking about brakes. And so here's what we're going to do. This right here is a brake caliper. So it has a piston right here. So when you hit the brake pedal, the fluid goes down. By the way, verified. It says BMW. <laughs> OEM parts. So the pads will go inside the caliper. We'll take, and generally the pad has a curve on it. So we'll take and we'll assemble the pad inside the caliper. Click. Well, these are rear brakes. I'm sorry. Okay. Guys, these are rear brakes. Okay. We'll take the other pad and we'll slip it right in here like so. Where's my... Oh, there we go. Now, yeah. these right here yeah. are gorgeous wow, zinc-coated rotors. The zinc actually helps the brake pads break into the rotor. Oh. These are made of... Because they're European, they're made of a softer metal. The reason for the softer metal is because you're decelerating from higher speeds. So if both materials are too hard, it's not going to stop. Yeah. It can't stop. Softer material stops better but doesn't last as long. Now, ooh, look at this. We're going to give a live example of brakes. You normally have to pay for these things like that to have that set up. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Tell me that doesn't look good. That's beautiful. All right. So. Our caliper has our pads. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up for you guys. Yeah. Okay, pads are inside. Right there, we have our caliper. And this is basically 
sandwiching this disc. Okay, so because it's sandwiching, yeah, it is able, as it spins, it clamps. And once it clamps, it starts stopping. Now, everybody has probably had a car where you could lock up the brakes. And um, what happens is you hit the brake pedal so hard that it clamps and it brings this rotor to an immediate stop. Wow. So these, these things have hell of clamping power. Ooh. Now, what does this have to do with our channel? We generally talk about maintenance and lube and stuff like that. Well, in, in the real world, I consider brakes a maintenance item because it's something you know you will have to do. Now, when you get a brake job, a couple of uh, what we like to call subtleties. First things first, you are going to want to flush your brake fluid out. Okay. If the brake fluid does not look clean inside the reservoir, you're going to want to get it clean. And even if it does look clean, you're going to want to flush the crap out of lines because brake fluid has a special word. What is the special word that brake fluid does? Do you know what it is? It's got a fun word. I have no idea. Hygroscopic. All right. Let's say that together, everybody. Hydroscopic. No, 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 no. High grow. High grow. High grow. That means it absorbs moisture willingly. Oh my God! Hurry. So, brake brake can brake fluid can absorb moisture up to three percent of the content can be moisture. At that point, it can no longer do its job. So now, what you have is you have that moisture in the line, which is turning to steam and expanding when the brake gets hot. Because as soon as you clamp on this rotor, you are creating heat. If we didn't create heat, we wouldn't stop. It's friction. It's called a friction coefficient. So, flushing this out prevents it from hanging up. A lot of times when I do a, a brake inspection, not only do I see how low the pads are, I will also look to see that they are wearing the same distance. So if I have a centimeter here and two centimeters on this side, there's something wrong, okay? And my job as a technician is to figure out what exactly is wrong. So most, most common is failure to lube the slide pins when you do a brake job. Ah, back here, we're gonna pop this off. We're gonna disassemble number five. Anybody get that joke? Anybody? No, disassemble number five. Okay. This is your caliper bracket. This is what bolts onto the back of the spindle. This is your caliper by itself. Now these little pins right here and these little holes will pop back out so you can so we can look at each other. Beautiful, Jeff. Beautiful. It's, it's like a monocle. Okay, so these little things slide in and I'm going to show you up close. Look, we go in and we just just like butter. It goes in and this piece slides up and down with little effort. And if you look, they're sliding evenly, they're going up and down. Now when you do a good brake job, if you're having uneven wear, you're probably gonna wanna replace the slide pins. With a slide pin kit, these little, these little pieces are rubbers. Yeah, they're rubbers. They're basically little teeny weeny rubbers yes. that slide around that pin. Right. And the better the glide is, the easier your brake pedal will whoop, pop back out. And so the way they actually miss wear when the pins lock up, the outer pad doesn't wear as much. What happens is because the, the caliper is not sliding, the piston, the piston inside the cylinder is pushing by itself and so it's only um, engaging the inner brake pad so here's what we have we now have an unbalanced braking system Ooh. one wheel is going so when i do a brake inspection another thing i do when i explain to the customer how much brakes they have because everybody's like how much brakes i translate into a percentage based off of the thickness and i have a brake gauge um, I don't know where it's at right now. I think it's somewhere lost in the desert. Tell them about the feelers too. Ooh, this one feelers actually. Feelers are good. So this being a European car doesn't have, um, what did you call them? Feelers. feelers. I call them squealers. Feelers right. and squealers. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It sounds yeah. like a good show. We're going to do feelers and squealers. Cheers to feelers and squealers. 
Okay, so we're gonna keep getting up here. European Wheeler. cars, uh, BMW, Mercedes, uh, Volkswagen, Audi. There's this little notch right here in the back. And that little notch gets a sensor that drops right inside of it. And the sensor is approximately, I'm gonna say about a half a centimeter deep. So let me get this, Jeff. Yeah. They're actually more sophisticated than feelers or squealers. Way more sophisticated, you know why? And what are the primary models that have this? Let's give them credit, Jeff. Oh Let's my gosh. let the Mercedes no owners know how great their car is. Tell them, Jeff. Uh, okay, so all the way from... Tell them how great their Mercedes is. All the way from the A, what is it, the A180, which is the very lowest one, uh -huh. all the way up to the SLR. All right. Because... Anymore. Every single, of course. Yeah. Every single European car has a brake wear monitor. Ah. It pops up on your dashboard and goes ding, 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 ding. Sounds like you won, but you're about to lose. So, because of that, I don't see a lot of the European cars come in grinding brakes because their dash has been yelling at them. Uh, Unless their last brake job, they didn't have the sensor replaced, and their dash has been yelling the whole time, so they got no clue. Not clue. So any Euro car, brakes and sensors. That's American awesome. cars have feelers and squealers. Feelers and squealers are so a little American metal hook. Cars mm -hmm. have feelers and squealers. I mean, look, but we want to make them squeal, right? Oh yeah. All right. So that's <laughs> well, not if you change your brakes early. And no. Jeff yeah, yeah. will keep you out of the danger zone. That's what I like about it. You know He's what I gonna pull you out of the fire before you even get near it. I've seen some really fun stuff. So uh, backyard side mechanic, right? He did. Uh, the lady wanted to know if her brakes were okay. She said, I hear a noise, I hear a squeal. And so the guy takes off the wheels, takes a pair of pliers, and cuts the squealer off and says, no, your brakes are fine. You still have some life. Oh, no. That squealer is to tell you that that brake pad is at the right, end yeah. of its useful life. <laughs> you don't ride the pads until you're at 0%. You really probably want to change them at about 15 yeah. prudent. 20%. So I'm going to play like a regular spectator, yeah, let's Jeff. let's do this. You ready? Jeff. Yes, Mr. Even. How often should I have my brakes changed? Well, let's go with this. I recommend that you get your brakes inspected every five to 8,000 miles. Can I inspect my brakes? You know what? You can if you would like, but the proper way to inspect brakes first off is you have to look at every single wheel. So... When you look, so I have to get my hands dirty and yeah, take off my wheels. Because here's what everybody does. So this brake pad is right here. This other, we're just going to use a slick one. This one is on the inside, right? So when you go to inspect your brakes and you try to look at it through the wheel, you're going to look right here. Yes. And you're going to see this. This you can't see for anything for the life of you. So in order to see the back pad, you take the wheel off. We have a window, a window to see the back pad. Look right there. You can see how thick the back pad is. I like it. You can do this on all four wheels. And if you, if you want to take the measurements, you take the measurements and you go by the lowest one. And then you can look up online actually what the chain specifications are. Now, Jeff, compared to like going to the dealer, are they going to screw me compared to you? Well... I will never ever talk trash about another technician. I'm not them. I don't well, have their location. Well, I'm just the dealer. Do you do it for less than the dealer? Well, I can guarantee that my price is less than the dealer. Absolutely unequivocal. Well, then I would take my brakes to Jeff. I, I've been doing brakes for a long. I don't know if you showed that one. One is called one of the certificates is called Undercar Specialist brakes suspension and exhaust service. I used to call it the Midas ASC certification because Midas was brake suspension and exhaust. So, among all the other things I decided to go for, I decided to get the X1 as well, which was a separate certification. And the prerequisite is to have those three, right? Uh, steering suspension, uh, brakes, and exhaust already done, then you take the X1 test. Beautiful. So. And if you're just getting to the channel or just coming in on Facebook, definitely give it a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. And if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. So you can come back and learn a lot of other great information on your vehicles. Jeff and I go live every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Las Vegas time. 
and uh, we're going to be going through answering a lot of questions. So if you're just getting on the channel, I see a lot of you, Kevin, Michael, Hector, and more are all leaving some good questions. If you're just getting on the channel, leave us a question. Jeff, our master mechanic, will uh, he'll be answering all your questions. And if you have any questions about the lube, any of the products, flush, PI, motor oil, anything, just uh, feel free to ask. So we're just going through step by step on the brakes. So now what are we up to, Jeff? Do you want to do a little five minutes of uh, answering some questions? Yeah, please. Let's all right, let's some, kick it off. There's got to be some good questions after all that info. Here we go. We're, we're going to kick it off. That. Shabubu, we got Hector D. Aranda. You guys got to get rid of that royal purple banner. Uh, hey, the color though is it's a it's a it's a good color, and the color attracts certain people. It's like baiting in the fish, and then we get to put the better lube on them. It's like putting, like uh, you know, you wouldn't want to you know dip your fish. And like canola oil, you'd stick them in avocado oil. And to be fair, there is an Amsoil flag that goes out before you see the royal purple one. And I got to give credit, uh, one of my suppliers did that window graphic for free. And I don't know if, if anybody's ever looked into window graphics like that. That's like $800. Oh, wow. So, you know, not going to look the gift horse in the mouth. I do still have customers that come here for royal purple. I don't stock it like I used to, but... There are people dyed in the blood purple. We have our friend from Southern California who I've talked to a few times. He watches our show, our show and we will do our oil comparison show as promised. Um, he's actually the one that recommended uh, doing breaks. I love it. So oh, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. yeah, it is a great and idea. And I apologize. I spaced the name. Um, I, I greatly apologize. I hate forgetting people's names, but I'm working harder on that now. That's good. All right. Jeff's getting smarter and not working hotter. Oh yeah, which is good. Yeah. Now, the next one. coming on the next one, Michael S. Could I switch my transmission fluid to Amsoil? My van has over 148 on it. Well, that'd be awesome for your van. Yes, <laughs> it would shift a lot better. Uh, you get better gas mileage, oh, sure. less vibration, yes. little more efficiency. And when you start it up and it's cold, you'll notice how it shifts like it's warmed up even when it's cold, which is like trippy. It's like, wow, Yeah. usually I have to get my car warmed up for the shift good. There's a, several vehicles I've had like that where they, Hondas, Hondas a lot will do that with the DF1 and the ZF1. Oh yeah. Um, I, what else do I have? Um, Chrysler's. With Sean Braun. Sean, Sean he's in the Charger Club. That's right. Sean has a killer uh, Dodge. He's always racing around town. And you'll notice if you see Sean Brown's Facebook, he's always taking photos no matter where he goes. Mm. And he's really a great guy. He's helped out big with the, the channel. Nice. Uh, what's up, Sean? We got Kevin Ashby. Is Ford the worst to work on brakes on? <laughs> you know... Ford product. Ford product. So, I'm trying to think of what the worst is for brakes. I still feel... There are some brakes that GM use, and there's a very special tool you have to use to take these brakes apart, but it has this giant U-shaped spring. So normally, if you see drum brakes, they have the cylindrical springs on the top, cylindrical right. spring, no. springs on the bottom. No. Well, for everything. They're to yeah. hold the shoes together, one's for the e-brake return. The and nails that they stick in the Yeah, you got the nail, the that's to hold it back. Yeah. These big springs do everything. They hold it back, they hold it together. Oh, good idea. And they are a monster. Ooh. First time I had to do the job, the special tool actually pulls them out and separates them so you can slide the shoes in and out. It's nice. Yeah. If you don't have that tool, you're using a screwdriver and you go pating and then it hits. That's why you don't play basketball. <laughs> and yeah, it hurts your hands and trying to put that stuff back together, it wrecks your thumbs. It's not fun. So they're terrible. They're terrible. But aside from that, I so really... When I oh. You know what? I'm going to talk on a Honda. 1994 Honda Accord. What the okay? heck? They decided to have what's called, we have a couple of different types of rotors. This right here is what is called a floating rotor. Huh. So if you take the wheel off and the one little tiny screw that holds the rotor onto the hub, you can take the rotor straight off. Okay? 
The other style would be the hub and rotor, which has the spindle and you put the bearings in. There's two different types of those. Mm -hmm. You have the ones with the cone bearings, like we're used to back in the day. You got the little grease cap, yeah. take them out. Pack, Pack the, bearings. the bearings. We're going to do a video on that. We're going to do Evans bearings in his drums. We're going to use Amsoil multi-purpose 100% synthetic grease and we're going to tap the front wheel bearings on the caddy yeah. so yeah. it's as slick as can be. Yeah. We're going to no, no drag from the bearings. Oh yeah. So that's the spindle and bearing. And we already tapped the rear diff so if you're just getting on the channel, boom, we already hit that sucker so it's got the severe gear 7590 in it. Now, Jeff, should we answer just a couple more and then we'll go on to that or what do you want to do? we got just well, a couple more people. Last one. All right. Worst one ever. All right. 1994 Honda Accord has a captured rotor. A which, captured rotor. Yeah, oh, which yeah. means the outside, the hub, where you would normally bolt the tire on and pull this off of is in front of the brake rotor. You literally have to split the hub out of the wheel bearing. Uh, yes, split the hub out of the wheel bearing wow. to take the rotor off, put the rotor back on, and half the time, 50% of the time when you do that, the bearing destroys itself. Mm. So then you have to change out the bearing too. It takes two hours per wheel to do that. And I even have a very, very special tool. Are you really serious, Jeff? I'm not lying to you even. This is the worst break job. Two hours a wheel. You could have to, you have a 50-50 shot on, of having Jeff, to do a wheel on, We got to ask the question. Is it the same price as an S-Class Mercedes break Just job? Just about. About five fifty to do front pads and rotors if you're billing. What about air. all four? All four. Oh, the rears. Awesome. The rears, honestly, worst case on the rears, maybe two fifty. Rears are easy because they're not captured. The fronts. Oh, I love. So Honda, it's eight hundred dollars to have a brake job on a Honda. Nineteen ninety four Honda Accord, unless you do it yourself. How and many the, years did they do that for? You know, I want to say it was only a limited number of years, from like eighty eight to like. So it was a big blunder. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. Uh oh, it was a big blunder. It was. Ooh, so you're gonna talk about some lube real quick and give me about a minute and a half. All right, Jeff, let's cool. do it. Mr. Matt, like so we're gonna get Matt on here a little bit too. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna finish up a little more, a couple more questions here. It's great to have Jeff. He's such a good technical guy. We got Hector D and Dan. And then the, why do 90% of semi trucks use drum brakes all around? Great right. question. I think that's because they have a little different setup with air braking, right? Yeah, with the S-cam style with air brakes, yes. And, and then their runaway, so just in case, uh, I guess if it loses power, it'll actually lock up the brakes so the trailer won't just keep going, right? Yeah. Is that why, the, is it a different brake setup? Yeah, um, they have a spring brake setup that once you lose your air pressure, they lock in. Got it. So it's for safety. That's what I suppose the uh, the uh, I'm not sure semi trucks are. And yeah, they do use drums. You know, it's uh, it's not a high performance, uh, super high heat type of brake job. They use a lot of engine braking. Speaking of a cross-eyed devil, we're actually going to be getting into that engine braking stuff. Our ostentatious, bodacious bro with uh, uh, our 2015 uh, 579 Peterbilt MX-13 pack car uh, engine and that is a 12.9 liter we did the engine flush on it you'll see that in the channel if you check back but after yeah after we did that his engine braking actually got a lot better nice so uh, when he's coasting down the hill the actual added compression from the 100% synthetic he can actually feel he doesn't have to use the brakes as much. Nice. So that's another benefit of the, the synthetics is not only on an 18 wheeler will you actually get the better gas mileage, which we're gonna show uh, on his computer logs. We're gonna show all his improved gas mileage, but we're gonna be showing um, how he can use better engine braking. It kind of holds back a little more. You can actually feel the compression. I remember the first time I changed my uh, C5 Corvette over to the 530 signature I went from uh, royal purple to oh, AMS oil and when I did it I could actually feel when I let off the gas I could feel the extra suction oh. so crazy as a bee nice. on a big engine like a, a little teeny engine you're not going to feel any more really suction or compression it's going to be mm -hmm. tough but on a big V8 if you actually switch over to this you'll actually feel more back pressure 
and you'll actually feel the better engine braking, which is such a cool thing. So yeah, that answers that. Schwicking on over to this, why are brake jobs on Porsche so expensive besides the expensive parts? Ha! Huh. Why are they, Jeff? Okay. Well, I'm going to be honest with everybody right off the bat. Um, I've never done a Porsche brake job. All right. But the parts are going to be the expense, obviously. And if you're getting your Porsche brake job done, more than likely you're at a, a place that's fairly specific to the car. So they're going to charge you at a higher labor rate because that's what they charge. So where you go to one place and it's 100 an hour, 125 an hour, you go to a, like a European car specialist, sometimes those guys are up to $200 an hour because you are getting, you're getting a level of experience on a specific vehicle. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In some cases, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I get Audis that come here and I don't mind doing basic maintenance and stuff on Audis and basic diagnostic, but when it comes to internal engine stuff, I have a friend who owns a Volkswagen Audi shop. That's all he does. His name is Wolf. Hmm. Wolf was from Germany. And he's got the most amazing van again you've ever seen in your life. He was uh, featured in a uh, German off-road magazine in this badass van again. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's expensive because they're charging. And I don't know what the labor time on that. I can look it up, but I'm guessing it ain't quick. It's not an hour per, hour per axle. So we got our ostentatious, bodacious bro, Wayne Eady. Yeah, he's over here. <clears throat> if you haven't seen Wayne, go back last week or two. He was on the live video, Ooh. and that's in the playlist. Yeah. And he did a killer uh, three-card money type routine. Oh, he live. showed that to me the other day. He blew my mind. And I tell you beautiful. what, Wayne's getting better. He's a real big part of the magic community here. We're going to be sticking him up on the wall. And he's like a utility piece. And he's such a great guy. We take care of his car. Now he's in with the magic here at the shop. Um, thanks, Wayne, for being a part of the channel. Coming on down, Wayne said the sound on YouTube is killer, nice. but he Ooh. said Facebook for some reason nothing wrong with the wires or anything. Ooh. Just double check the why. He said it seems doesn't, it's not sounding right, yeah. which isn't good. So we'll just go. Here. Um, here. So thanks, Wayne, for here. mentioning that. Here. Popping on down. Yeah. Shaboo boo boo shaboo boo. Why is the ba ba da ba? Is there a way to adjust the piston travel on drum brakes? Ooh. Is that okay. true, Jeff? Is that possible? Well, so you're not you really... I don't know what piston he's talking about. What's that? Yeah, self-adjust. Oh, no. He's yeah. talking about the piston on top. It's what the piston? So the, the, the wheel cylinder. So the piston inside of there is called the wheel cylinder. Um, it, does, it kind of adjusts, but it doesn't. When you hit the brakes, the wheel cylinder goes off. When you release the brakes, it comes back in. Now, it, there's adjustment to it. It's either going on or coming back, right? Okay. The adjustment inside the drums is what Matt yeah. had mentioned, called the self-adjuster. There's a couple Slack of different... Adjuster. Yeah, so yeah it's the little clicky up, thing. When you hit your e-brake, or is it when yeah. you hit... You know what? You know what? F all that. Oh. No, I have spent... I spent time in a car doing the e-brake and pumping the brake right, while going right. 30 in reverse. Or how do you do that? I mean, what if what if you were to take the 15 minutes, pull the wheels off, and do a manual adjustment? Huh? That's what I do. But and then you try to get the drum on there. Then you adjust it too far. Yeah. And most of the time, here's two things to remember on doing an adjustment. First off. Most of the time there's an adjustment on the back if you can fit a small screwdriver and there go is. clicky, clicky, clicky. Yeah. And when you do it, you wrench. just want to, first off, if you have a differential or axle vehicle, you want to make sure that it's in neutral and you want to check the drag of the one side with the other drum off. You still have the drive line yeah. drag, but what you want to hear is when you're taking that drum, you're turning it, you just want to hear, ready? You just want to hear a little touch. Mm -hmm. just a touch yeah. um, and then you do it to the other side now if your drums are old and they have lips inside of them you will be doing yourself a huge disservice by adjusting your brakes on bad drums because then you got to bring it to me and I charge two hours to three hours to get a locked up drum out because they are hard I'm sitting there with honestly brute effing force I'm there with pry bars and big screwdrivers popping that thing off until the, those pins you were talking about. Yeah. I basically try to shear the back of the pins. Uh -huh. 
there's no easy way to do it. Uh, and once, even once you shear the back of the pins, the drums full or the shoes fold in, it's still hard. Wow. So that's all because you adjusted shoes out with a lip. So you're locking it now, out. Now, if you have your drums turned, you lose that lift, right? Correct, correct, yeah. So if you do a brake job, every third brake job, or is it every, it, uh, it varies? You know, it really does vary. It really does, and people, if you drive with your parking brake on, you might be, <laughs> you might be I see him for. do that all the time. I, uh, on my way in here, someone has a brake on, like, really? So what's our uh, what's our next question? Uh, just Wayne talking about adjusting self self adjusting brakes stuff like that. All right. So let's. Um, what else should we get into, Jeff? Should we tap into? Uh, Do you want to discuss the different pad materials that we have? Yeah, that's a great right. suggestion. Yeah. Let's go with pad friction material, as we call it. So in the beginning, now I don't know what the very very first one he had mentioned leather. Um, They've used all sorts of compressed material, but the this first, material. yeah, the friction material. I've heard ceramic, and then I've heard yeah. other. Oh boy, we have a whole whole bunch, and yeah. I will make a brief mention of EDC brakes at the end because that's what I promised for our friend in uh, SoCal. All right. So the first friction material that was really worth its uh, weight in gold or salt was asbestos. Asbestos is wonderful. It wears slowly um, it absorbs the heat so well but it's still fibrous and it grabs on so, so it's Jeff's grabbing. saying asbestos is asbestos you can get yeah pretty much asbestos is asbestos until you die from it right yeah so, so you just don't breathe in the material when you're doing the right well job. I just won't breathe anymore at all they actually so when uh, <laughs> when they used to do asbestos breaks and they were they hadn't um, yeah they hadn't started that yet they had a brake wash so you would take, and we had this in the military too, basically you put a big pan under the brakes, you spray it down with this liquid so it can all come down. Like brake Wow. Yeah, so but it it's, dust. yeah, it so you yeah. basically kill the dust. It's just like our trucks out here that spray the dirt so yeah. we don't dust up the air. Yes, yes. So asbestos is great. Then they found out it was bad. Uh, so we stopped using asbestos. The very next thing we went, it was what they call an organic compound. Organic sounds like to me that they took cow pies and they hit them with that big smasher until they made a uh, compressed hockey puck and then they bonded it to a piece of metal. That's how I feel about organic breaks. Right. Speaking of cow pies, ooh, tell me about a cow pie. I was watching classic Johnny Carson. Oh, I like classic Steve Johnny. Martin's on yeah. there, and Steve Martin does this thing. He goes, "Here, guys, I'm going to show you what we call the cow pasture shuffle." Okay. This is what it is right here. Ready? Here it is. <laughs> that was good. So that was, that was Steve Martin's best card trick, and that was a joke. And that was on Classic Carson in 1977. I love Classic. I was on there watching some. I was like, that's a good one. I got to use that. Classic. So uh, we have the organic material, which I like to call compressed cow pies, or I actually refer to them as hockey pucks because you don't know what a hockey puck's made out of, neither do I. Yeah. You may, but I don't. And you don't know what organic's Rubbish. made out of. So we have our next material from organic, which is semi metallic. Hmm. Semi metallic has, uh, you can visibly see copper in it. <laughs> it's got some other, I don't know the exact compound, but obviously it's semi metallic. I'm guessing it's mixed in with the organic material. Then we have ceramic, and ceramic is a very, very hard pad. It's a hard material. Um, it does a pretty good job of dissipating heat, but the cheaper the material, the softer it is, the better it breaks. Now this is the effed up thing. So they had to figure out a balance. Organic brakes are crappy. They wear out fast, they squeak and squeal, but they will stop your car faster than any other brakes. And they are just wonderful as far as braking. They're just cheap. Uh, and people gauge the cheapness of the brakes. Yeah, you'll go through them. They want brakes to last forever. The, for, the, the lifetime brake job is gone. Nobody. I saw one down the street, Jeff. Oh, I had to stop in. Uh, and they have all these exceptions, Jeff. Yeah. It is hilarious. What are the, I, you know what? 
I have never. Yeah, I had to, Jeff. I couldn't no, resist. No, no. So as long as I've been doing this, I have never actually shopped out a lifetime break, nor did I have ever I did offered it. it. So I what? Did it. No. What are the exceptions? We have there, here they are. It's one year uh, under regular driving. If the if the rotors get warped, Jeff, that then it doesn't count. So how can you have roped rotors? They're all going to get roped a bit, uh, uh, warped eventually. Right. So it makes absolutely no sense. Then we'll give you new parts. It's breaking off. We'll give you new parts, but they won't include the labor or something, Jeff. Oh wow! Like there's all these entanglements. So, Next thing you know, you're getting married, you, you and you know? have the lawyer that helps sign the papers, and now he's the one marrying your wife. <laughs> so I, I've got I've got literally basic brake job packages. Uh -huh. And all my stuff comes 18 month, 18,000 mile warranty. Prorated kind of. Wow. No. 18 month, 18,000 mile free replacement. Gotcha. Now, after 18,000 miles, your brakes are all yours. Um, <laughs> and if you manage to wear out a set of brake pads in 18,000 miles, you need to get a different car. Or you do have another issue. You might have a bad caliper, bad master cylinder, oh, yeah. something, your brake system's nasty. Basically, it's impossible unless there's a major. Function. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Impossible. I did see you were selling Hondas for a while. So believe it or not, I actually used to sell Hondas. There was a Honda that was out, and I forgot. I want to say it was 2009 or 10. This car came in. It had just over 20,000 miles, and it needed brakes on the rear of a Honda. Those are light cars. I and on I the saw. Rear. Usually you and it was, it was a Civic. Yeah, fronts are always first. You yeah. generally, like you had said before, you'll do the fronts twice before you do the backs once. Unless for the most part. it's a Corvette. Ah, fifty-fifty active braking. handling. Yep. And ah. when it has active handling, when your rear end steps out, it actually bites the inside tire and sticks you back straight. It's beautiful. And it just cheese graters the piss out of the pads. Like uh, I used to have the drilled and slotted rotors in my Corvette, and I completely destroyed the back pads in like forty thousand miles, even though I wasn't even doing anything crazy. And it's a stick. Yeah. So, yeah. You were you were hammering pretty good. No, it just power slides a little bit, but even if you step out an inch and a half, Jeff. Yeah, it still grabs. It yeah. kicks in, so they actually awesome. did the active management. Um, they actually remapped it from nineteen ninety seven to two thousand one. Starting in 2002 to 2004 in the C5 Corvette, they really stepped up their active handling in the wet. So when you have traction on, and that's why so many people, they say just turn off traction. But when you turn off traction, you know, you know what can happen if you're not a good driver. That could be the end. And unfortunately, it was the end for someone we all know and love in the race community. Real skinny, blonde guy, big hot shot, almost untouchable and holly weird. And one day, just basically shoe dust off a pair of sneakers. Mm. That's it. I don't even want to talk about it. That's some serious stuff. That's scary as hell, Jeff. That's some serious stuff. 100 mile an hour into a tree this wide. Yeah. Paper, nothing left. And that was a Porsche, correct? He has a GT, yeah. Carrera GT, 600 crank horsepower. Yeah. So I, it actually happened very near my hometown, believe it or Jeez. not. Yeah. Ugh. So if, if you guys don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Paul Walker. Ugh. So, but so, um, have you ever driven and had a brake failure? Have you ever had brake failure? I have. Before? I had my right foot went completely to the floor when I got done lifeguarding. Nice summer, out resilient kid, just trying to, you know, make a buck. Get in the pants of another lifeguard girl there at the pool. That's all I had in my mind, and there I am, so all you have negotiating mind. traffic, swerving, because my foot goes to the floor because my rusted brake line just popped on me, and all the fluid left a huge leak underneath the car, Jeff, because my Pontiac Cran Dam had rusted brake lines because it, that's all it did is sit in all the moisture back in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, back east, those guys, they're masters with brake lines. That's all they do is brakes and exhaust. So in the winter time, uh, they actually have a ton of business. And Wayne had mentioned that our picture is blurry on YouTube. I don't know that we can fix that, uh, but you know, it could be the could be the Wi-Fi. 
could be the Wi-Fi, it could be the uh, YouTube can sometimes have glitches too. Fair enough. Hi, right, we're, we're still live, we're still looking good. You see where so, we're at. So, uh, Big Matt, yes, have you ever had some brakes fail on you? I have, and just from overheat, um, I'd be coming off from between Golden Valley and Bullhead. Yeah. And to Laughlin. Okay. And driving what? Driving a big, big, big truck. Okay. And what kind of big truck? How many axles? Uh, three axles. Three axles. Okay, so like a, a small, like a dump truck kind of looking yeah. thing. Okay. Class B style, and be taking the wrong gear, and at the bottom of where there used to be an AMPM, now it's a, a gas drip now. Okay. It was a big bellow of smoke. <laughs> I thought the truck was going to catch on fire, so that was, that, that was, that was poor experience yeah. at the time. I had, I had a couple, um, nothing, well, no, there was one that scared the ever-living bejesus out of me. So I'm going to tell this to people, and I don't want you to be afraid, I don't want you to be upset, but um, if you have a hybrid, um, when you hit the brakes, you are asking the car to brake. You're not telling the car to brake, just so you know. The, uh, yeah. Really? There is uh, almost yeah. no fluid connection between your to the brake module. I was in a uh, Highlander, a little bit older, but still hybrid. I want to say okay. seven or eight Highlander Toyota. Okay. And. Um, the ABS module was having problems to turn on the lights, so I took it for a test drive, right? And I go, I, I romp it. I want to get up, to, I want to decelerate good. I, I check the brakes a couple of ways. I do really slow braking with light pedal to listen for squeals. I do uh, acceleration and then light braking to feel for vibrations. And then I do acceleration and hard braking to feel for imbalance. That's the three ways. Yeah. So that's, that's every time you bring a car in for a brake inspection, that's how I test it. Now, I was in this Highlander, and I went to go hit the brakes, and it locked up the front and the right tire, which tried to pull me off the freaking road. It went ah, like that. I was scared. I, I don't get commonly scared in cars, you know, I know how they work, I trust vehicles a lot because I know the operation, you know, some people don't trust their cars when it has a malfunction, I know which malfunctions are going to kill you and which ones are not, right. basically. Uh, this one scared me because this is a kill you malfunction, so we took it in, uh, we have replaced the ABS controller and if you have a hybrid vehicle, do not open your brake lines unless you are a shop and have a scan tool. The procedure to bleed the brakes in a Highlander is done with a scanner. I think you touch the pedal a couple of times and they go from wheel to wheel and it uses the ABS pump to spray the fluid out. If you tried to do it like we, like we talked about, you will get fluid out of the front right tire. That's it. That's the extent of your fluid connection. I tried bleeding it the old-fashioned way, thinking I knew what the heck I was doing. And it uh, turns out I spent like three hours bleeding it wrong. So then I got the scanner out, and it took 30 minutes with the scanner to bleed these brakes out. And when I was done, it was perfect, but that was a learning experience. It's beautiful. Yeah. So say, Jeff, what do you say we nail through a couple of products? Let Let's them know do about this. some new stuff. Give them the rundown on the new upper cylinder Ooh. lubricant, Jeff. Top end lubricant on this will lubricate your piston rings, also lubes the pencil of the injector. As long as it sprays, it'll lubricate the valve seat as well. This is wonderful stuff because as it lubes the piston rings, it'll increase your compression. Boom. Beautiful. Now this right here is 100% synthetic uh, ATF fluid multi-vehicle. And this is actually what we just stuck in, my 1959 Cadillac. And it's got the uh, four-speed hydromatic uh, transmission. And we just actually changed it out. So look for that video coming up probably Saturday. Okay. We'll have that video coming out. And uh, this is good for double the severe service interval of OEM. So if you have like a pickup truck and you tow with it and you're supposed to change it every 15,000, this fluid can handle the heat 
of 30,000 miles of towing or plowing snow. Wow. So to a fleet, it offers a lot of extra protection. You don't have to have butterflies. You're saying, oh God, I gotta climb this, you know, 9,000 foot hill in Colorado. And this is that extra peace of mind that makes you feel better. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so we're doing that. We um, have, go through, uh, uh, let me go else. through. We have our PI, which is what we throw in the tank once every 4,000 miles. Um, cleans out your fuel system, gets deposits, um, lubricates. Oh, this one lubricates the fuel pump too. I forgot to tell you about that. Because oh. um, it does need. Lubricate. It does, yeah. Fuel pumps. Fuel pumps is a rotator. It's a, right. it's a rotary pump. Yes. Anything that spins will deteriorate. Yes. Ooh, we're showing Jeff. We're giving him classic handlings how to present the product. So should, this right here does wonderful stuff. Now. Um, our Signature Series 5W30 motor oil is fantastic, and we have a Signature Series story here. Yes. Um, so we had talked about me doing my experiment in my Honda. I still have not thrown a shot in, which I'm going to do tonight. Wow. Um, we got to get video of it, Jeff. I got 300, and what are we, we're 373 right now? 373 on one tank of gas. On 13.5 gallons. Now, on average for my vehicle, in the winter time, because I don't run my AC a whole lot, I get about 330 miles. In the summertime, it's approximately 300, because I run my AC. AC takes, yeah, it takes it's a little bit of power. I mean, especially I got the little Mickey Mouse four cylinder in there. Um, so the fact that I went from 330 to 380 even you're good at percentages how many percent increase is that 340 to what three four three thirty three thirty three eighty because i'm going to drive that additional that's mile to go to my like gas what? station 15 percent i don't know i would say 15 almost uh 17 percent all right yeah because you got a 30 and a 20. my goodness yeah 17 percent increase in fuel economy now i did switch over from dirt cheap synthetic what, what we call the house brand. <laughs> hey, look, you gotta have, there's so many vehicles that so require regular, synthetic. So regular synthetic. Yeah, regular synthetic. To? To, I did an engine flush. Yep. And signature series 5W20. Now what this flush does is it actually prepares your engine for the good stuff, yeah. the 100% synthetic. You don't want all kinds of irregular shape molecules, molecules with edges to them, dirty molecules, molecules that scratch the metal. You don't want that. You want to flush it all out. This gets rid of all the sludge, uh, cleans your lifters, your valves. Uh, it helps loosen sticky valves and around the valve rings. Uh, and it's really, really a great thinner and it kind of breaks down the oil. It almost delaminates it and uh, there's really no special trick to using it. Yeah. Whoop, you pop off the cap, you go ahead and just stick it in, and uh, boy, that thing's a tough one. You just take the pop off the little safety seal, you dump it in, and then uh, you idle it for only 15 minutes. Yeah. So you get the oil nice and hot, and then once you yank off the drain plug, the oil comes out like water, Absolutely. and uh, it actually is really good for turbos as well. I almost forgot that. Yeah. On turbos, you get a lot of uh, oil coking yes. and oil coking kind of like this brownish dark uh, film that sticks to the inside of the turbo and there's a little uh, screen usually through the turbos and that hole can get tighter and tighter and tighter to where it gets tighter and tighter and tighter to where oil can't go through anymore so if you don't have any oil going through your turbo to cool it that could be the very end of your turbo and I've had a lot of people on the channel they go even well, if you just change your oil every 2,000 miles, you're going to be fine. Well, then not at all. So if you have a turbo car, if you use regular mineral oil, when you turn it off, you're going to have oil coking. Yeah, and it's, it's, going to get, it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Yeah. And uh, you will choke out the turbo. Once you choke out the turbo, your exhaust gases go up. Your intake air goes up and gets hotter. Before you know it, now you're losing power. Now you're beating the hell out of your engine. You're leaning out. Now your oil's getting hotter. For every 18 it's degrees really hotter, hotter, yeah, too. for every 18 degrees hotter your motor oil runs, it oxidizes twice as quick. Yeah. And now before you know it, here you are in Las Vegas, you're only, you only have 2,600 miles on an oil change and you're stomping the gas on your car and you're like, why isn't this sucker going? 
and then all of a sudden you see a bunch of smoke under the hood you go like that you look you check the dipstick and the only thing you see on the dipstick is charcoal and that's it that'll be the last time you ever drive your car with a turbo and uh, that bill could be anywhere from 68.50 to probably like 77.7 yeah so on a, on a mercedes v12 by turbo probably about 68,000 bucks Jeff. and that's you're actually 70 grand so here, here's what's up yeah the best way your turbo can fail is what you're talking about you're right yeah. what's the worst Jeff? oh boy if it decides to lock up because it didn't get enough lubr lubricant into that bearing and decides to spit blades in your intake guess what <laughs> Goodness. It's like it, your turbo just took a shotgun to your intake, your valves, your pistons, your freaking sidewalls, into, and let's say it into your inner cooler. Let's say it made it out of the valves it makes and it out of the other. blasted into the catalytic converter. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit. You know what? The trick for that one is, okay, which one? You can go ahead and pull the radiator cap off the vehicle. It's the first step. You shove it the hell out of the way, you pull a new vehicle under it, and you put the cap back on, and you fixed it. <laughs> That's it. That's how you fix that. So I would fix it. Lake Mead needs some more anchors for some more boats. If you got a house boat and a turbo oh. that blew up. You got some? We Ooh. got one finger cleaning. That's right, just one finger. You take the bottle, you stick it in, and you just hold it with one finger. I like that. That's our good man, Gulf Coast Surfer. Nice. Thanks for surfing the coast. And then we got James. James won many giveaways. Oh. Cool. James yes. is a good friend on Facebook. And James, he says, uh, Hey guys at Wama, looking forward to catching up on the show. Keep up the good work and even not leaking oil on Jeff's shop floor. <laughs> <laughs> We have no spills. Honestly, the worst thing that happens to the shop floor is probably my feet. Yep. Yeah, because these shoes get disgusting. They, when I get home, first thing I do is I kick these off at the door. Or I actually, no, there's carpet in there, man. That's ricotta. So, uh, or I'll kick them off here and I have my home shoes. Got to have home shoes. Yeah. Wow, my goodness. So, yeah, so we're sitting here relaxing. Jeff and I do this stuff in our sleep. Yeah. I don't even remember what we talked about, but we know we had fun. We, yeah. And we know that things got wet, they got lubed, and now they're protected. And that's if the one thing we worry about is making sure everything's wet and protected. Yeah. Is as soon as it runs out of oil, like Jeff said, and that bearing gets starved, it could be a shotgun blast. You want, yeah. you want to see something like that? No way. Kaboom. You don't want to see it. So keep it lubed, keep it wet. The wetter, the better. And if it ain't wet, it ain't protected. If it ain't protected, it ain't wet. That's why the yeah. wetter the better. The wetter the better. And um, I don't know what else, Jeff. We should so probably. Here's here's the thing. Just remember this, okay? If you don't want to fix the brakes yourself, you hear a noise, take it to somebody. If you feel like doing it yourself, make sure to take all your precautions. Have all your tools ready. Read the procedure beforehand. Make sure you have your jacks, a 12 pack of beer. Just kidding. Make that water. Um, don't work on a vehicle drunk. Bad idea. Um, I've seen some funny stuff where they put the brake pad on, they come in, I just did brakes and they're making noise. <laughs> so they put a pad on backwards. Now they have to get a new pad, they have to get a new set of rotors, and it, it's insane. Insane. Now, uh, you might. Stay right there, please. All right, so I had a request from a friend of mine, and I'm going to see if we can do it. Okay, so you ready? He asked me if I could vanish this rotor, okay? So on the count of three, one, two, three. Ho, ho, ho. Where did it go? That's How do you right. do that, Jack? Isn't that amazing? Yes! Poof. That's right. Magic. That was on live that was on live video, wasn't it? Dude. That's that's a shout out to my bird guys. We got Mondre and we got uh, uh, John Sheets out there. Thank you for teaching me the subtleties 
of vanishing a bird. Oh could you imagine? Now, I love my bird guys, but could you imagine the bird guys swinging iron? Imagine those little birds were made of iron and lead. That'd be hilarious. So I've never seen anything like that, Jeff. It's awesome, right? I thought it was going to go right. I thought it was. I think he was preparing for it to hit his head. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I like even too much. He's got that. Look at the hair. How bad? I would go straight to hell if I hurt that hair. Somebody, somebody, be upset. Now this hair is nothing. Now sometimes girls like to pull it, but one thing that girls like more, and a lot of men won't tell it, but a lot of men like the mustache for a reason. And that's for moustache rides. And a woman that'll admit it is a woman that rides a Harley. Go up to a woman that rides a Harley, just ask her the question, you know, and say, what do you think of a good developed stash? And she'll smirk with a little smile, and she'll think back to good times, and then she'll love you for it. <laughs> the other option is she will slap the ever-living shit out of you. No way. No go. way, no way. Not Jeff. No. No way. Guys, I, I think, do we have any more questions? Yes. Oh, yay. Hey, fellas, just tuned in. What's the advantage of having Amcel synthetic brake fluid compared to OEM brake fluid? Oh, fantastic. It's the boiling point. Yes. This is dot three, dot four. This one stands up to, uh, do, 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 do. This meets a uh, dot, exceeds dot 5.1. Wow. What's our flash point on this one, Mr. Even? It's boiling is uh, 368 Fahrenheit, but um, the, the, the industry spec on dot four is, I think, 311, right? I was just it, looking at it. You're, you're telling me. I, oh, there we go. There we go. 311, yeah. yeah. So, uh, wet boiling point of 368. Now, wet boiling point, we were talking about it being hygroscopic and it absorbs the moisture. So, it can take the heat up to 368 degrees with the maximum amount of moisture in it. Uh, the other one's 311. It will go higher if there is no moisture. But I can't tell you what's in your brake line. Flush it out, get the good stuff in it. Quick, exactly. Quick exactly. Ruin around. Also, Kevin asked, how often should I flush variable valve timing with direct injection? Oh boy. Jeez. Yeah, let me tell you about that. I would do uh, an engine flush every 10,000 miles, so every other oil change. Um, did he say it was turbo as well? Uh, he didn't, but I'm sure injection. it is. A okay. lot of the direct injection yeah. cars are turbo. But so yeah. direct injection also suffers from the fact that the fuel is directed directly into the cylinder and doesn't get cleaned by anything. It just gets explosions on it. So that is the oh, wow. good reason for the PI and the top end lube at the same time. Every 4,000 miles, I'm not going to tell you to increase the interval because they didn't tell me to. This you can use every fill up. It's up to you. If, if you want to come buy a case of this, just stop by, let me know, call us. We haven't bumped phone number. Even if I wanted to call you at two o'clock in the morning and I had this itch that I couldn't scratch, I needed to know everything about the upper cylinder lubricant. I'd answer your questions, Jeff. Would you? I at, would. At three o'clock in the morning, what about? You'd call me at 702-472-3614. You can call or text. Yeah. And uh, if you just can't sleep, something's bothering you and you think it's because you need a question answered. No one listens to you. Yeah. Your mom hates you. Yeah. Your dad doesn't know you exist. You call me, I'll help you. Yeah, and nice uh, my cell phone number is 702-472-3614. And uh, also you can call Jeff too, but if you're new to the channel, definitely click the subscribe button. We're gonna get into a lot more lube on the 59 Cadillac. We're going to be nailing Jeff's car. He's yeah. got a Moonstang. That's right. 89. The Moose on Moose on Moose, which is a classic Fox body. So we're going to be tapping the Moose. We'll do engine trans diff. Coming on over to Matt here, we're going to be doing a oil analysis test on his beautiful 2012 Dodge 2500 Ram 6 7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. Yeah. He drives the living bejesus out of it. He's yeah. a Every certified day. electrician. So uh, he. Uh, at first notice, you think Matt, you think he's just a fixture of the channel or a prop. He's not. He's a real guy. He shares the channel. And if you share the channel as well, you can actually be in the giveaway coming up here on October 26th, Saturday, 11 a.m., yeah. live on the channel. 
and we'd love to have you getting stuck into the platform. We're giving away a hundred dollar gift card, we're giving away snap on tools, right, Jeff? Yeah. Check, check this out. I got oh. Oh, 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 yeah. And that's how we got it. From uh, just, just posting. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome light. It is. It's fantastic. I'm glad. Look, you even take really good carriers. My goodness. And actually, Jeff that uses good. that light on a daily basis. Yeah, so this I, is a great utility I piece. I keep it in my pocket. And we really appreciate everyone that shares the channel. I appreciate every preferred customer of Amsoil that buys the products with my link. If you want to try the products, I got my link below. If you want to use Jeff's link, that link's below. Yes. And even if it's not, yeah. Jeff, just leave that on the ground. We don't want to break nothing. All right. All right? Fair enough. And if you want to use Jeff's link, uh, or you can also call Jeff. You can call me. Let me give you the two numbers. We have our bat line. Bat line, you can text me. It's 702-907-9227. If you want to call me during business hours, uh, I'm here Monday through Saturday. You can catch me 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. generally, sometimes 6. But, you know, keep it, keep it in the midday. If I'm not here, you leave a message with uh, one of my ladies at work at the front desk, and I will call you back. Um, that phone number, 702-433-5823. You can head down to the shop, too. You got a 50-50 shot of catching even here. Um, we're at 5400 East Tropicana. We're actually live from 5400 East Tropicana. It's Trop and Boulder Highway. And if you're hungry, we got Domino's next door. Yep. Yeah. And if you're just Amanda. getting to the channel, definitely give it a thumbs up. That really helps right us out. Right there. It's right there. Yep. And we really appreciate everyone on YouTube and Facebook yeah. for being a part of the community. If you think you know someone that this can help, share it with them. Please. Text me a screenshot that you shared it. Give me your full your full name, first and last name. Text me at 702-472-3614. My phone number is in the description below. And I will personally save you in my phone. And that way you can be in the giveaway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we will uh, we'll list these phone numbers again in the description. Put the address and all that. And like you said, we'll have the link. So on my Facebook homies, like, subscribe. Uh, not subscribe. <laughs> like our page. Share our posts. And you know what? If you get a wild hair up your booty, start a watch party. You can like literally like watch movies together on Facebook. And the movie happens to be... Synthetic Oil Protection Thursday Night Live show. Yep. Yeah. What number is this one even? We are 23. 23, 23 oh. deep. Oh. 23 deep. We're just when getting our toes wet. 23. And we're going to be actually meeting a guy, Wick Stevens. He's going to be coming back soon. Oh my oh, God. Uh, we tried to ditch him on Fremont and he won't die. He keeps coming back. He just won't die. He's, on like, us. he's like that dog you dropped off in the desert last week. He came back, didn't he? Yeah, he's. Uh, is actually his parents tried to ditch him at the zoo. They said, kid, you're so ugly, and they wouldn't even take him back at the zoo. It's terrible. <laughs> actually, his dog found out that, that uh, he looked like his dog, and his dog killed himself. That's oh, how it's... ugly this guy is. Oh. That's Rodney Dangerfield. Did, did his mom here. tie a pork chop around his neck? Still wouldn't chase him, huh? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it didn't work. So uh, okay. somehow we're going to have to get rid of him. I don't know what we're going to do, but we want to know. We want to still use him as a little bit of a tool on the channel yeah he's a tool so that's what we're gonna do so <laughs> all right guys so uh thanks again for watching us share it with your friends like comment share everything please subscribe you know like the shop page we post at the shop we post a few magic tricks a week if you go on to even's youtube page uh we have at least at least three or four services a week done on there, right? Yes. Tap and differentials, oil changes, transmission, fluid service. We're going to have that bearing job with some grease. And if you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I should try that stuff. If you're thinking it, you should do it. Don't do it. So uh, you can sure as heck try the products and I can guarantee you'll be surprised. Call, and Call us up. We'll yeah. get it for you and we'll ship it to you if yeah. you want. You know? you'll, see, you'll see on my Instagram, I have had a lot of really cool people share with me their results. Awesome. Kind of emotional. It pulls at my heartstrings a little bit, Jeff. I don't really like to get into that sticky stuff. Yeah. But I've been having these results that are amazing. Yeah. And, I mean, 17% uh, in my car. And you know damn well, I don't buy into gimmicks. I don't buy into bullshit. This was a double blind taste test. Nice. Double blind test. And I refuse to do anything other than one step at a time. I did the flush and the signature. Now, 
I'm taking this with me. I'm going to go throw this in my tank. I'll record the one finger drop. Can we do it right now, Jeff? Let's do it. You want to drop it in now? Let's do it. Mother of pearl. No, no, because I'm it. still getting my gas mileage. I'm going to take a picture right. at the reading. And then we'll get video of it. All right. Then, we'll, then I'll All sit right. there and I'll make, so I'll make a video. So let's wrap it up, Jeff. Yeah. Let's wrap her up. Yeah. So. Again. So we're going to thank Matt for being on the channel. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Matt is a total gladiator, huge part of the channel. He's won several giveaways, and it's all by coincidence. You can actually go back in that playlist yeah. on every giveaway, and you can see we pick him randomly out of the hat. Most of the time, up today. <laughs> it's funny. They it, named me, and he goes, yeah, cool. <laughs> and it's very easy to share. I think he's, yeah. It, it, it's so easy to share. <laughs> We got we got our mass shares. We've got Chris Vogel, we've got Matt, Sean Braun, uh, Lana Turner. I mean, he's won like three, four hundred bucks and stuff. <laughs> I mean, so many of you guys are sharing. I mean, should we do a three-way cheers? Let's do a three-way cheers. Grab a bottle, Matt. Ooh, I'm gonna pick my bottle because it's what I'm using. Let's wrap it up. On the All count right. of the three, we're gonna cheers to protection. Ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three. Cheers. Cheers. To protection, to protection, 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 protection. One of these times we'll get that all like that at the same <laughs> time. But awkward moment. Beautiful. Time. Beautiful. Awkward moment. It happened. It happened. What that. it was, what happened, I don't know. But it happened. Jeff, let's see that armpit with teeth. Give us a big grin. I'm coming in for the big grin. Here it comes. Keep the grin, Jeff. There's the moustache.